Welcome back! This video explains the visual state component. This component received a ton of reworks since it first appeared and is now at its most versatile, but also a bit tricky to get into. Thus, a video explaining it is badly needed, so let me get started. The visual component describes the complete appearance of an actor on the basis of an array of integers. This works by subdividing the visual appearance of an actor into two structs. The visual mesh struct, which I also refer to as a look, and the visual material struct, which I also refer to as a material set. Let me explain that with the aid of this scheme. In the visual component, we save an array of looks or visual mesh structs. For example, look 1 and 2 here. It basically it basically contains a mesh and a few additional information, including an area of visual material structs, like the ones over here. As you can see, the material sets most importantly save all materials that are supposed to be on the mesh, even if they are not changing from material set to material set, like the wood material over here. With all this information, the visual component enables you to create heavily modifiable actor that can change materials as well as complete meshes. The only problem? It's a bit confusing to set up with all the different errands. So let me try to clarify that with an example. For this, I prepared this actor with two meshes and their respective materials. As a first step, we need to add the visual component. Here, at its most simple state, we have a name struct, which we can use to name the button accessing the visual component. Let's call it visuals. Then we have an array called meshes and the component tag to search variable. The latter one is very important because it tells the component which mesh it is affecting. For now, we want to work with the static mesh of the plant. So we create a tag here and add it to the tag of the plant mesh so it can be recognized. For starters, let's assume we only want to change the material of the plant. Now we need to start filling the meshes array here. Let's add one entry and open it up. By the way, this entry is one visual mesh struct. Let's go through its contents step by step. Under name, you can enter the name of the look. Let's call it plant. Next, we can enter either a static mesh or a skeletal mesh. Please remember that you neither can enter a mesh in both slots of one struct nor change between skeletal mesh and static mesh on one visual component. You have to decide for one and stick with it. Let's skip materials for now and continue with the 2D button struct. It practically defines what the button looks like that can access this look. We can enter a texture, a material or a color. Incidentally, there's a hierarchy here. If you enter a texture, none of the other entries will be used. And if you enter no texture but a material, the color will still be ignored. The data asset we can skip for now. It's not a required entry. And the same goes for the sound, which would be played when this specific look is accessed. Now that we are set up here, let's go to the material sets array. By the way, I strongly advise you to always follow this procedure of completely setting up the look before you dive into the material sets, because it can be very confusing if you don't. With that in mind, let's assume you want to give the player a choice of three different plant material sets. Consequently, we need to enter three visual material structs, one for each choice we want to give the player. Let me show you the ropes with the first one. Here we have another name and button content. This time it's for the material set we are creating. Let's call it yellow and add a yellow color as button content. Now we have another materials array. This one will contain all materials that we need to close the mesh. If you are uncertain, have a look at the mesh. Here under material slots, you can see that the plant static mesh has only one material. In consequence, our array will also contain only one material. Now we are done with the first material set. Two more to go. Let's call the second one green and give the button a matching color and so on. Finally, let's have a look at what we set up. As a first try, you can just place your actor in one of your maps and use the search for next material function to display all material sets you've created in editor. However, the visual component does not limit us to changing materials. 
As I mentioned before, we can also create a completely new look using a different mesh. Let's try that. First, we need to find a suitable mesh. I prepared this other plant mesh that is suitable. It's not much bigger or smaller than the other mesh, and more importantly, it has the pivot at the same position. This is very important since the visual component places the new mesh at the same location or relative location as the old one. And if the pivots are different, the mesh will be placed in the floor or floating or something like that. So now on to creating our second look. We need a different visuals mesh struct for it, which we add here. Let's set it up with the new static mesh and the other info as before. Again, I will use this texture I prepared for the button content. Now for the material sets. We need at least one, but let's say we want to also be able to change the color of the plant pot. So let's enter two structs here. Again, I will enter additional info first. Let's choose white as button color and set the name accordingly. Now for the materials. A look at the mesh shows that we need three materials to close this mesh. Consequently, we need to add three materials to the array. Now that we have multiple materials, order becomes an issue too. Since the visuals component works with arrays of integers on its basic level, it does not know which material belongs where, except by its index in the array. In short, you need not only add all materials of the mesh here, you also must enter them in the same order as in the material slots on the mesh. In case of the, the plant here, the first entry with index 0 is the leaf material. The second entry with index 1 is the material of the pot, which is porcelain white right now. And the last entry with index 2 is the soil material. Now for the other material set, we want the pot to be black and all other materials unchanged. First, let me set up the additional information of the setting, second material set. Now regarding the materials themselves, we need three entries again. Since we want to change the pot color only, we keep the entries with index 0 and 2 the same and only change the entry with index 1 to this dark material. Let me recap. We added all materials of the mesh again because when this set is called, all materials will be exchanged with the materials of the entry with the same index. Consequently, if we entered only the pot material, the component would exchange the leaf material with the new pot material when called. Now, let's see how our actor does with the new settings on the visual component. Maybe you noticed that we worked only in editor for this tutorial and did not use any of the button content I entered before. The reason for that is that the visuals component is a state component. This means it mainly records the state of an actor. The player's interaction to change that state are implemented by another set of components, the interaction component. Of those, the selection menu component is the most suited to access the visual component. Follow the link in the description if you want to know to how to set it up. The video uses the same actor I just prepared. See you there. Bye bye.